Hello, everybody. Possible to zoom? Zoom. Like slightly. Sorry, can I? Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, that's all I can do. Accidentally. If anything, I will go from time to time. Sure. Hello everybody, uh, this is teacher Nathan here and today we'll be going through uh, MGS uh, prelim exam for primary 6 uh, from the year 2023. I can see some of you are already in my uh, TikTok live. Welcome everyone. Uh, we'll wait for one more minute before we uh, get working on the paper. Alright, without further ado, let's start with MGS prelim paper. So how this will work is I will go through question by question and explain how I get the answer. And if you have any questions on your part, you can always just type it in the comment section and we can discuss the answers. Okay, okay so now over here we have a grammar. So let's start with question one. Hafiz is considering dash in a landscape photography contest. To express his creativity and love for nature. Okay, first, let's identify the question type. So this is testing on your tenses. Oh, another thing, if you know the answer or you, are, or you have some answer in mind, please also feel free to type it in the chat. And then we will uh, discuss whether the answers are correct or wrong. All right. So back to question one. This is a tenses question. So let's take a look at the keywords. Number one, Hafiz. This is one person, singular. Next. This, all these words here are verbs. That is, action words. And over here, this is also present tense express his creativity. This is present tense. So if you look at your options that are, that are given to you, both option 1 and option 2 are present tense. So we can consider them. And however, please take note that option 3, participation is a noun. So you are referring to something, to an object. As such, Option 3 will not be uh, considered because over here, we need a verb, action word. Now, if you take a look at, question, at option 4, this is also considered present tense. All right. However, option 4 is considered for option 4, present continuous. This means that the action is ongoing the time of speaking. So as I am telling you at this moment, Hafiz is considering joining this competition, which means uh, Hafiz at the, in, in his house is considering and having this thought in mind. Therefore, our answer will be option four. 
Hafiz is considering in a landscape photography contest to express his creativity for nature. All right, Zira, wow, brother, the way you hold the pen, damn unique. Ah, uh, that's the that, that's the way that I hold the pen that allows me to teach well. All right, come, let's take a look at question two. Mrs. Lim yet let Yen Ling dash his mind for as long as he needed, patiently listening without interrupting. Okay, come. This kind of question is also a tenses question. And over here, our keyword, patiently listening. This is present tense. Okay. Next, there are two subjects over here, Mrs. Lim and Yen Ling. Two subjects. Okay, can everyone see? So because uh, it is two subjects separated by this one word here, let, the answer will be number one, speak, due to subject verb agreement. Okay, now, because it is present tense over here, we will never consider spoke, which is past tense, and spoken, which is past perfect tense. Okay, now, uh, welcome everyone. I can see more of you guys are already in my uh, TikTok live. Uh, I invite you to uh, type your answers in the comment section if you guys know the answer. And if you are unsure of anything, please also uh, type your questions in the uh, comment section so that we can discuss and learn from one another. Okay? Now I'm going through uh, Methodist Girls School Primary School uh, prelim exam from 2023. And now I'm on grammar, the third question. If, you, if only you had come to the concert with me, you dash the show. My sister said delightfully. This is also tenses. Alright. So over here, let's identify my keyword. This is had come, which is past perfect tense. Okay, let's take a look at the options that we have. Number one, will enjoy. This actually is future tense. That means you will. That means uh, you will. That means you will only experience the happiness in the future. So if I if my sister told me this and I use option one, I will only enjoy or be happy at five pm because it, this event hasn't occurred. Now let's take a look at option two. Would enjoy enjoy here. Present tense. Okay, let's take a look at option three. Option three is present continuous tense. And option four here is present perfect. Present perfect. This means that the action occurred in the past, but effect still felt. All right. So for this question over here, we'll just focus on the enjoy. All right. So for Options two, three, and four. I, I say this is a uh, present tense because of the enjoy. Enjoying is uh, for enjoying that is a uh, present continuous. All right, and over here have enjoyed. This is present perfect. So for question three, my answer would be number four. And why is this so? Because if I had gone to the concert, the effect here 
the effect of enjoying the concert will still be felt. So if I were to draw a timeline, let's say Friday, 6 p.m. My sister went to the concert, went for the concert. <coughs> At Friday, 10 p.m., she told me that the concert has ended, concert ends, and she tells me she enjoys the show. So over here, this is already, the, it's already uh, in the past, but this is event number two. And this is also in the past, but it is earlier. So I call this event number one. So if a uh, sister told me this fact here, that means that if I went to the concert at Friday 6 p.m., I would have started my enjoying all the way until Sunday 3 p.m., which is now, which is the present. So as you can see, the effect is still felt at this moment, even though this uh, attendance at the concert was so long ago. And because of this uh, effect that we can see over here, it is used as present perfect tense, and it must be option number four. All right. Now let's go on to op uh, question four. The residents objected strongly dash the construction of a skate park in their serene neighborhood. Okay, so this is a preposition question. Now let's take a look at uh, the options that we have over here. Two on four and over. For two, we're talking about direction of thought. Take note, one. over here I'm talking about, okay, I see, I saw and ha, he said, he said this number one. Okay, are there any more answers? Okay, by the way, option one is correct. And it is because you're talking about your thought, your thinking about how the resident objected strongly to the construction of a skate park and objected. Now, let's, uh, go, uh, let's go through the other options so that you understand when to use them. So uh, on, this is refers to a surface. So I place my pen on the table. The table is a surface. Okay, next, four. Four is uh, directed as something. And over is a movement. Okay, so if we take a look, four, I can say I was late for the concert. So as you can see, this is your something. It's usually an object. Okay, this is for option three. And number four, okay, fly over the mountain. So over over here refers to like this. Okay, so this is how uh, I, I, I tell myself uh, when I'm looking at the options. Now let's go on to question five. Mr. Mohan dash the belief that artificial intelligence changes the way we work. So he encourages his children to keep up with the technological advances. So this is also a preposition question. Okay, let's take a look at the options that we have. In, this refers to a place. So you can say in the classroom. So we are referring to this place in the classroom. So you can say uh, Su is in the classroom. So I mean Su is inside this place. Next, we have off. This off refers to a relationship of relationship in something. Okay, so you can say teacher Nathan is part of writers at work, which means 
I am a member of this organization. I teach at Writers at Work. That's how we use of and we use it to show relationship. So Writers at Work is my place of work. Place of work. And I am part of this organization or this company. All right. Now, with is used to describe the possession of something. So I can say, I bring my wallet with me. So over here, your with shows that when I go out, my wallet is with me. Wallet. Okay. Lastly, under. Under refers to movement again. So if we say under the bridge, it just shows that you are here, this location. Okay? So for this question, because we are talking about a belief and who, who actually has this belief Mr. Mohan. So he is related to this belief. So therefore, it should be number two. It's of the belief. Now, you may think that number three is also quite similar because of the word possession. But this one needs to be of something tangible. Something that you can touch and see. Okay? Therefore, the answer is number two. All right, everybody, if you are listening and you have seen uh, the questions and you know the answer before I even give it, please uh, feel free to type your answers in the comment section. Now, let's go on to question six. Dad is going to China for a business trip. He's never been to that country before. Dash, Chen Yu asked his mother inquisitively. Now, this one is a question tag. So, you need a negative and a positive sent a word on the same line. So, for example, is and isn't. Okay? Now, if you look at uh, this question here, his, this, if I were to spell it out, it is he has. So, over here, you can see that this is a positive Sorry, he's never. So actually, it's negative. Okay? So if it's negative over here, we need a positive statement at the back. Therefore, it would be has he. So number two. Okay? Now, let's go on to question seven. Dash the obstacle they faced. The team remained determined to achieve their goal to become the national champions. So this is actually a conjunction question. And take, let's take a look at some keywords over here. Obstacles they face versus remain determined. So logically speaking, obstacles and challenges is something that is negative to us. Whereas if you remain determined and you have fighting spirit, that's considered something positive. Okay, now let's take a look at the options that we have, okay? Owing to, this is used for cause and effect. Okay, next we have in spite of, this is to show contrast. Now, uh, we also have except for, which is, also, which is used to show a special case. And lastly, we have resulting from, which is used to show cause effect. So as you can see over here, because we have negative and positive, this is actually a contrast. So when we have a contrast, what must we use in spite of? Because this is to show contrast. Now, what's the difference between owing to and resulting from? Usually, they can be used interchangeably. So, we can say 
owing to his injury, he could not play football. So we can have our cause over here, injury, and the result, the effect. Okay? <coughs> now let's go on to question 8. The weary hiker dashed through the dense jungle for hours before he collapsed in exhaustion. Now for this one, this is a tensest question. So let's take a look at the keywords. Hours before he collapsed. Take a look. Huh? There's a past. This is with a D. So this is past tense. Okay, I see JO3 say is number four. Had been tracking. Yeah, good. The answer is number four. But why is it number four? Had been tracking is past perfect continuous. This means that the action was going on in the past when a second action occurred. So if I were to draw a timeline, the hiker collapsed. But before he collapsed, he had been tracking. That's why we talk about had been tracking. Now, are there any more questions with re regards to options 1 to 3? The type of uh, tensors have already been uh, covered previously. So, uh, in the interest of time, I will go on to the next question first. Grandfather was very disappointed that none of his sons showed dash interest in taking over his traditional bakery. So this one, we are talking about pronouns. And if we go and look at our keywords again, he was disappointed and none here, which means that their interest must be very little. And at the same time, is there a hard question, sir? Okay, number four. Okay. Uh, J03, you are correct. This is number four. Hard question. For grammar, I think this paper is fairly straightforward, but for our vocab section, it will be more interesting. Okay, let's go. Let me finish 9 and 10 first. We'll go through vocab section from about 3.30 onwards. Now, if we look at it, look at it here, interest over here is uncountable. So therefore, and you can see that nobody is interested here. Therefore, few and little cannot be the answer. Now, most is superlative. So you need the word the before most. So you can say the most expensive car. So you see, before there's a the. So therefore our answer would be much. Because there isn't a the here, lah, okay? Right? Okay, next, let's go on to question four. A collection of vintage cars there showcased at a car show last week, attracting many curious onlookers. Now, this is a tensor's question. And if you take a look at this question, at the keywords here, last week, but one collection, a, uh, this is refers to one. Therefore, we will use the word was. Okay? Now, I'll give everyone about one minute to digest the information I just shared before we go on to our vocab section. The vocab sections for this paper is slightly more challenging, so please stay tuned and we'll have some uh, good experience learning. All right, come everybody. Let's go on to question 11, the vocab. Ever since the Chan family adopted a new puppy, the children like the dash eat like best friends, playing with it every day. So for this question here, we will always underline the keywords first. So playing with it every day is one of them, and best friends is my second keyword. So let's take a look at the question. Taken in, this one refers to including something. Taken to 
actually means start to like somebody too far away. Ah, okay. Uh, slowly making the screen slightly bigger, okay. The frog emoji person. Okay, next. Taken up means that you're interested in, a, in something. And lastly, taken after means resemble somebody. Now, so you, if, you, if you take a look at this, we're talking about being best friends. So actually, the, the close answer here is to start to like somebody, which is actually number two. And therefore, this is our answer. And for number three, this something over here needs to be an object that is tangible. So you could say he, he, he takes up cycling as a hobby. So if you take a look here, cycling is something that is, that is an object and is tangible. Okay, next, let's go on to uh, question 12. <coughs> Despite his initial hesitation, Justin dashed to peer pressure and joined his friends in skipping school to watch a movie. Here, our keyword will be join his friends in skipping school. Next, we talk about peer pressure. Okay, so now let's take a look at the answers. Adapted basically means you make something for a new purpose. So if we talk about, let's say, this old shop house. So instead of using it as a shop house, you adapt it to become a hotel because it is a tourist location. Now, resisted basically means you say no to temptation. So if you take a look at this question, my keywords already show me that he joined his friends, which means that he did not resist temptation. So therefore, number two will definitely be out. Now, I also have adjusted. Adjusted basically means to make changes to something. So, ah, very good. I can see uh, the frog already says number four. Yeah, the frog emoji person. Very good, very good. Succumb basically means you give in to temptation. So for adjusted, I adjusted my screen. So I make changes to the screen so you can see my writing clearly. All right. Now let's go on to question 13. With the deadline fast approaching, the team felt that felt the stress of the presentation and worked tirelessly to ensure its success. So uh, I can take a look at uh, deadline fast approaching as my keyword. Now look at impactful. Impactful means effect on somebody or something. Next, imminent means happening soon. And this refers usually to event. Incidental means happen as a result of something. Well, intermittent refers to irregular intervals. So, can anyone tell me what's the answer for question 13? You can type it in the chat. Hello everyone, I'm still at uh, MGS question uh, 13. Uh, is there any number? Someone said two, two. Okay, very good, imminent, because the deadline is approaching, that means this is your event. Very good. Come, let's continue with next question, question 14. Very good, uh, Kitty Lee J H and the frog. Yeah, good job. Okay, now let's take a look at question 14. Due to Roy's shabby clothes, the shopkeeper harbored Dash against him and accused him of shoplifting. Now let's take a look at our keywords. Shabby clothes is one, and accuse him of shoplifting is another. So if we take a look here, and our options, partiality, which means not bias. Prejudice, which means bias. Peculiarity means a strange habit. And preference means like something over another. So over here, you can see that 
the word accuse is being used. So when you accuse somebody without evidence, it means that you definitely is you are definitely biased. So therefore the answer will be option two. Okay. Now, let's take a look at question 15. Naomi explained the complex concept dash in a few sentences, gaining nods of approval from her classmates. First keyword, complex concept. Next, a few sentences. Now, let's take a look at the options that are given to us. Bluntly, this basically means you, without considering somebody's emotions. Ah, I see. Someone said it's number two. Number two is correct because concisely means to summarize something long into something short. Thoroughly means 100%. While deliberately means you do something on purpose. Very good. Uh, I shall call you uh, the, the frog emoji person. Yeah, it's great. Now, I will give everyone some time to digest the information before I carry on with the vocab close section. Now, let's go on to uh, question this, this part of the past, the, 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 the preview paper. Jenny stepped into the bustling hawker centre. The savoury aroma instantly tickling her senses. She was amazed by the vibrant energy that filled the place. She walked past rows of food stalls, each enticing her with its mouth-watering dishes. So, in this sentence, my keyword is mouth-watering dishes. Let's take a look at the options that I have. Inspiring, tempting, delighting, and influencing. Inspiring means you have the urge to do something. Tempting means persuade somebody to do something. Delighting means you are pleased. As in you are happy. Now, influencing means you have an effect on someone's behavior. So for this question here, we're talking about mouth-watering dishes and she is definitely persuaded to eat them. Therefore, our answer for question 16 is number 2. Now everybody, if you are interested to, have, to know why is your answer wrong or if you have answers in mind, you can just put them in the chat. Then we can discuss them, alright? Let's take a look at question 17 now. The queue is the best testament to the quality of food at the store. Because she looking she is looking for the store with the longest queue. So <coughs> basically, the longest queue is evidence of something. Okay, so therefore, the testament to the quality of food. That means the long queue, this passage is telling you that the long queue shows good food. So this is evidence and this is the truth. Therefore, the answer is number one. Now let's take a look at the other options that are available to us. Exhibition basically means to show something. Realization means you become fully aware or something. Lastly, recognition means you acknowledge the existence of something. Alright? Now, actually, option 1 and option 4 are quite similar. Because you act, there, is, there, is an, there is something that exists and because of this existence, it leads you to a truth. Now, for recognition, we usually talk about uh, results. 
usually these results come in the form of awards. So for this passage here, we just talk about quality of food. Unless we say that the food is Michelin star, then you can say it's recognized and it has recognition. If not, if it's just generally just quality of food, you can see over here, I write general. Then usually we'll just use the word evidence. <clears throat> now moving on to question 18. Savvy dinners like her knew that if they wanted the signature dish that the stores offered, they had to endure the weight. Now, signature dish. Let's take a look at the options that we have. Rare. Rare means difficult to find. Okay. Now, exclusive means restricted to a group of people. So basically, exclusive may mean, for example, fine dining is an exclusive activity. This means that actually this activity here only can be enjoyed by few people. And why is it so? Because it is expensive. Okay? Now, distinctive means something that is that catches your eye. Something that is very something that attracts attention. Lastly, we have extraordinary. Extraordinary means unusual. So you're talking about a dish that is signature. We are talking about something that is very distinctive. Why is it distinctive? Because it captures your attention is like the number one dish the store has to offer. Therefore, the answer is number three. Now, if you have your answers with you as you go through this paper with me, please feel free to type them out in the comment section and we'll discuss on the answers that we have. Okay. Now, going on to question 19. An old and dash way to cool down their piping hot beverage. Over here, we talk about sipping hot drinks from their sauces, which is something that is not usually done. Now, because it is not usually done, let's have that in mind when we take a look at the options. Now, first one, clever. Clever means you do something that is smart. Now, expert means you are just good at something. Reliable means good quality. While efficient means good productivity. Okay. Now, option 3 option 4 are very similar. Reliable, you can talk about reliable car. Which means that the car doesn't break down does not break down, doesn't break down often. Whereas efficient is basically talking about somebody, you can talk about a person, you can talk about, uh, basically if you talk about someone who is efficient, means that somebody can do a lot of things in fixed time. Now efficient also can be used to talk about a car, so if we talk about efficient as a car, it could be because it uses very little petrol. So let's take note. Lah. Efficient can be object or person. Now if we take a look at our question here, because this is not usually done, but at the same time, it is something that can be done to cool down their piping hot beverages. This is something that is smart. And therefore, the answer is 1. Now, going on to our last question. He skillfully tossed the flat rice noodles and other ingredients into the sizzling wok. Now, our options that we have include briskly. That means you do it very quickly. 
adeptly means that you have a certain level of ability. And this ability comes from experience. Naturally means you do something that isn't difficult. And persistently means you do repeated times. Now for this question over here, you talk about skill. Skill usually is because you have accumulated enough experience. And therefore, there is this ability. So the answer would be number two. Now I'll give everybody some time to digest the information I've just shared with you. And if you have questions, please post them in the chat. We'll be going on to grammar cloaks very shortly. All right, everyone. If there are no questions, let's go on to booklet B and we'll talk about our grammar clothes. Sherpas are Nepalese ethnic guard group. Shopas are a Nepalese ethnic group renowned dash their rich cultural superior climbing skills and extreme endurance for high altitudes. Now let's take a look at our keywords that we have. Rich culture, superior climbing skills and extreme endurance. These are objects. And over here at this question, you are renowned dash something. So this is basically a preposition. And this preposition here will be for. Very good aspect. Now let's go on. Sherpas dash lived in the high mountains of the Himalayas for generations. So this guy is important. Now, for this question here, you see ah. Uh, Having lived for generations. So they, they do it from the past until today. So because of that, it is present continuous. So it, when we talk about present continuous, we are talking about having. Now moving on. Sherpas dash my uh my Sherpas migrated dash Eastern Tibet to Nepal around five hundred years ago. Now, if we take a look at the keywords that we have, Tibet and Nepal are places. Therefore, this preposition here is related to location. Ah, aspect. You say from very good. The that's the answer. Now let's go on. Uh. Sherpas did not climb mountains. They eat their livelihood through high altitude farming, cattle racing, wool spinning, and weaving. It was not dash the 1920s that Sherpas been involved, become involved in climbing. Now over here, our keyword again is 1920s. Very good. Until fast Lina Yap aspect. I'll say until. Very good. The answer is actually until. Because we are talking about conjunction that is related to time and is talking about from 1920 onwards so this special time period very good let's go on now. the influx of mountaineers into the Sherpa homeland has drastically transformed Sherpa culture and way dash life now life is an object here so if you're talking about an object with prepositions, we have the answer of way of life. Very good, Fasil uh, said. Way of life, this is also a phrase. That means the three words will always come together regardless of what. Okay, let's go on. Sherpa guides are not dashed the muscles in the expedition. Carrying 35 kg of client's gear, 
setting up camps, cooking meals. So over here, we need an adverb. And this adverb is to show emphasis. So if you want to talk about these two criteria, the best answer is just. They, not, they are not just the muscles, but also this, this, and this. To show emphasis that they are really reliable people. Now let's go on. They are also expert navigators. A very good uh, wonder, wonder, every good, good. They are, they are also expert navigators. Dash the vast experience. Most climbers will not. So over here, we are talking about a criteria. And if they are talking about criteria, there are always a few words. Unless, without. Right? So if you take a look at this question here, the answer will be Q. Without. So without the experience, they will not be able to dash a chance of reaching the peak. This over here, we need a adverb again. But this adverb here is to show emphasis. Therefore, the answer is not even. Now, uh, first Lina, yeah, please take note. Because we are talking about criteria here, it needs to be without with something, the climbers will something. So if we are talking about the word with, it's usually a cause effect. So let's say with the sure pass, climbers will reach the peak. So the criteria, the cause over here that I'm talking about is the presence of sure pass. And this will lead to the effect, which means climbers can reach the peak. Okay, very good. Uh, Wonder Evie is uh, without for uh, question 35. Now let's go on to question 37. Uh, I see Aspect already uh, putting the answer up. Uh, an absolute necessity for dash successful climbing expedition. Now this one is not A, but rather it is B, any. Okay? any successful climbing expedition. Why is it not A? Or basically, if we use the word all, we are talking about 100%. But the reason why it's any is because we are showing emphasis here. Emphasis plus 100%. Because you can see the keyword that we have is absolute. Absolute is an additional word for emphasis also. So if we are talking about having emphasis here, then we also need to talk about any, not all. Okay, even though both sound grammatically correct. What Sherpa guides do, dash commendable. Okay, so over here, the, the, start, the, the, the role that they play is singular, one role. Therefore, the answer here is is. Very good aspect. Is. Thank you, uh, Faslina, for your kind, kind comments. Now, this is the answer for grammar close. I just give everybody some time to digest about the information before we go on to editing. Now, everybody, if you have any, com any comments or any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat group and we can always discuss our answers, all right? Now let's take a look at, uh, this is uh, editing. Mr. Ang's desire to help the less fortunate stands from his childhood. How do we do something that would be beneficial to society? Now, beneficial, this is a spelling error. So let me just spell it correctly for you. So if you are unsure of what word is here, my suggestion is for you to speak it up and you read it to yourself. Even though you cannot find this funny, funny word in the dictionary, at least you can understand. Ah, I see aspect who said beneficial is spelled that way. Very good. That's correct. So just read it out to yourself 
the different syllable and you will figure out what word is it. All right. He talked about Dash to make uh, philanthropic efforts one of its priorities. So over here, we are, talk we are looking at these philanthropic efforts as a method. So if there's a method involved, we need to use the word how. Therefore, this is how. When is used when there's a time involved. Okay, looking at number 41, this is also spelling error. Priorities. Priorities. It is spelled this way. Okay. A memorable visit to a voluntary organization. Voluntary. This is spelled this way. Like that. Okay, this is A. Now going on. Mr. Ang, a voluntary welfare organization, convinced Mr. Ang that his company could leverage its strengths to provide nutritious. New Nutritious. Okay, sorry, I've forgotten a T. Nutritious. Okay, so it'll be like that. Moving on, uh, the initiative was not only about providing meals but also job. Initiative. Spelled this way. As such, Mr. Ang explored the possibility. This is a word form error. So, you, this, all these word form errors, let me just go through this type of question. Huh? It's a type of question. Word form errors require you to change, for example, from a noun to a verb and the other way also have adjective to noun. So, for example, active is a verb. Okay, maybe this is not a good example. Okay, let me go through adjective to noun first. So, let's say he's mischievous. So, a noun can be mischief. Okay, now, verb. Okay, now let's go on to other questions. Huh? A few within a few months, Samsung Kitchen and Changi was ready dash operation. Okay, this one is an error. Okay, so over here it is this 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 is actually correct. So uh, I will not go through this. Ah, I see nutritious. Okay, I see aspects comment. That's correct. Thirty inmates were trained in food hygiene. Hygiene is spelled this way. Okay. They were equipped. You can take a look at these questions. Uh. Was, were. So, past tense. So, past tense of equip is equipped with a PD. And knowing. Knowing is actually a verb. This is what I call a verb to a noun. Okay? I wasn't able to give an example just now, so I just use this question as my example. Knowing is a verb. The noun is knowledge. Okay? Very good aspect. I can see that. Come, if there are more people who know the answers, please also feel free to type them in the comments. Now, last one. Uh, which would also prepare them for the workforce. This one we're talking about time, preposition. Preposition of time. So, we can use the word upon or after. Okay, by. By usually is possessive. So, you could say the lesson was taught by teacher Nathan. So over here, you can see that the lesson and teacher Nathan. So the lesson is taught. It's like, it's basically conducted by so and so. Okay. Now for this editing, just like, to, just like everyone to know, the question types. Usually, we have the most basic one, which is tenses. So, for example, equip to equip. Question 48 here. This is a very straightforward. This is the kind of questions you cannot afford to lose marks in. Then we have <coughs> what I call the word form questions. This one requires you to change, for example, a verb to noun, a noun to adjective, 
and vice versa. For these kind of questions, it requires you to have the knowledge of this word form. And you can do so by practice and by reading. So how do you get practice? Google is a very good friend of yours. Or you can also attend our TikTok sessions. In fact, after this session, we have another one at uh, 4.15. So if you're interested, please stay tuned and join us until 6 this evening. Lastly, we also have spelling. Spelling is also uh, needs to be done through practice and reading. And for practice, feel free to join us on TikTok. We are also live on a few, in, on a few weekdays as well. If you have questions regarding our live 